Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be continuing our LOS beginners series. In this video we'll be setting up the model on a transmitter and getting the receiver installed in the plane. So where this series is aimed at beginners I will be taking things a bit slower in this and I'm also going to be doing things in bite sizes. So today we're not going to get the model ready for Maiden, we're basically going to get our receiver installed and our transmitter with a very basic setup just so that the two are talking and things are moving. So first of all, we're gonna head into EFOS and set up a basic model. Okay, so because you might be completely new to this, let's have a quick look at our transmitter. This is an EFOS tutorial, so of course I'm assuming that you have a transmitter that can run EFOS, such as an X20 like this, an X18, or one of the older FreeSky transmitters that can be updated, such as the X10S Express and the X12S. So what we'll do is just have an overview of what the things are on the transmitters. Now, first of all, we have these two sticks here, which are our gimbals, and this is our primary controls for the plane. Now, by standard, this is set up as mode two, which means that this here is the throttle, this is the rudder, this is the elevator and this is the ailerons. So they're obviously controlling the power to the motor, the yaw direction of the plane. This will control the roll of the plane and this will control the pitch. So they're the basic controls. Then we have a load of other things that we don't really need to worry about at the beginner stage. We have a few switches which we can assign to do different roles. We have a slider here which I've actually just got set up as my volume. We have some buttons and we have some sliders on the side. The important things that we're going to be using when we first go to Maiden our plane are these things here which are called trims and what they will actually do is offset the control surface slightly. For this very basic setup at this stage, we're just really concentrating on our gimbals and we will set up a throttle cut. In the next part, we will be adding rates and expo, but uh, which will be on another switch, but I'll cover that in the next video. So that's the basics of the controls. Next up, what we're going to do is talk about how the radio talks to the receiver. So when we first set up the receiver with the transmitter, we go through a binding process. Now this is slightly different if you're using ACCST receivers or whether you're using access receivers. But essentially you are binding this receiver to the model that we're creating. So it doesn't work on any other models and they, they know each other. So when we power our transmitter on and then we switch on the receiver, they connect to each other and they talk to each other. Now you, you may remember I've just mentioned a second ago, ACCST or ACCESS. These are uh, protocols, which is basically a language that they talk to each other in. So the next thing that we're going to talk about briefly is channel order. Um, I will be setting up using the default or the standard channel order that comes with EFOS. So um, I'll explain that in a sec. But if we look at the receiver, we have these pins on the back. This is where we plug our servos and our ESC into. And down this side, which I'll put a better image on screen, we have little labels telling us what these outputs are. So there are basically just numbers, but some of them do have actual names on this receiver. And this is, the first one is ailerons, elevator, throttle, and rudder. They're the first four channels on the channel order. And that is basically what our channel order is, is making sure that those first four channels match up to what our transmitter is sending out. And if you're using a stabilized receiver like this, it's actually quite important that you keep it in AETR. Channel orders are named after the first letter of each thing. So A for aileron, E for elevator, T for throttle and R for rudder. So it's a nice easy way to remember it. If you want to check for channel order or if you think you may have changed it when you're just investigating, if you go into the uh, system menu and click on sticks, you'll find the channel order listed right here. So you can see we're in AETR. Basically, the channel order on the transmitter is used for when we use the new model wizard. So when it adds the features such as the elevator and rudder, etc., 
it puts them in the correct place. So let's stop overcomplicating things. I'm hoping this isn't. If you do have any questions, of course, leave a comment and I will answer them. But let's get in and create our new model because hopefully things will just be easier to understand when you can see it visually. So I'm going to go to the model menu and go to the model select page and I'm going to click the plus button to create a new model. Now for this we're going to set up a standard four channel aeroplane. I will actually be using five channels because I will be having two outputs for ailerons but the basic setup is exactly the same. So what we're going to do we we'll choose aeroplane and click next. The next screen asks us if we have an engine, we have one engine, so we click next. Now we get to the wing setup. So you can see here on this side, we have ailerons, which are the surfaces that control the roll. These here are the ailerons and they're used to roll the plane. As I mentioned, my model actually has two channels for the ailerons, but for most beginner models you'll probably find that you only have one channel and what's called a Y lead. So this here is quite a long Y lead but you may find that your kit comes with one of these. So the idea is you'll just plug this into the single aileron on the receiver and then each one of these outputs goes to the individual aileron servos because you obviously have an aileron servo in each wing. But for my model, I actually have two separate servo leads right to the receiver. So I'll set it up using two. So as I said, this is a basic four channel, so we're not going to be setting flaps up. So we'll just go to next. The next option is the tail. So it's the type of tail. So a standard or a traditional tail looks like this. So we have a vertical stabilizer, which will have the rudder on it. And then we have the horizontal stabilizer, which have the elevators. If I scroll through, it will show a top view of the other type. So as you can see in this picture, a V-tail has two angled stabilizers, each with a control surface on. Now these control surfaces are called rudder vators and they will control the rudder and the elevator function. So if your model has a V-tail, which if you're a beginner, is pretty unlikely you'll probably have a traditional tail, but that's where you would change it. And the last option is no tail, which you would use if it's a flying wing. Again, if you're a beginner, I would not recommend a flying wing. So we will go back to traditional tail and click the next button. Now you can choose the function. So we have got our elevators, which are these surfaces here. You can actually have a servo on each one on some models, but most beginner models will just have a single servo controlling either one continuous elevator or a rod to each side. So we will leave the elevator on one channel and the rudder also will be one channel. The rudder is this surface here which controls the yaw elevator controls the pitch so let's go to the next page and this one is really simple we're just going to give the model a name so bear with me a sec once you've named the model we can give it a picture if you want to know how to get these pictures on your transmitter i've got a video for that so i'll put a link in the top corner i already have one installed So there we go, then we'll click next and that's the wizard complete. So let's have a look at what's been set up. So if we go into our mixer, you will see we have ailerons, elevator, throttle and rudders. Notice that A, E, T, R order again. On ailerons, I have channels one and five, but if you choose one aileron servo, you'll just have channel one here. Elevators on channel 2, throttle on channel 3, and rudders on channel 4. And if we check out the receiver again, we will see that that tallies up perfectly with what we have. We have ailerons on 1, elevator on 2, throttle on 3, rudder on 4. 
So everything on here is great. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do before we go any further is add something called a throttle cut. Now, this is a safety feature to mean that you can't spin the motor accidentally if it's enabled. And also you can just flip a switch to stop the motor straight away. So what we're gonna do is click on it and go to edit. And what we're gonna do is go down to throttle cut and click the button to open up the menu. Active condition is the switch position that you want throttle cut to be working in. So I set mine up using this SF. Flick towards me is the motors off because I find that nice and easy to operate. So what we need to do is to click the return button to come out. The next thing that we need to do is turn sticky on. This is pretty important if we're running electric planes. It means that as soon as we hit the throttle cut, it will cut it completely. So if I, if I move the throttle cut away, so this is the throttle cut off, you'll notice that the uh, throttle is actually moving. So this would be activating our motor. If I flick it towards me, it will instantly cut the motor off. And no matter what I do with this stick here, it's not going up the graph, which is adding power. So just to explain these, down the bottom we have minus 100, and at the top we have plus 100. So with regards to the throttle, minus 100 is off, plus 100 is full power. So with that throttle cut enabled, we don't get any power, we've got a bit of safety. You do have to be careful with the standard EFOS throttle cut. If you flick the switch to the off position, so the motor can work. As soon as you lower the throttle, the next time you raise it, it will work. So just be mindful of that. You, you just want to be careful. I actually use a slightly different throttle cut, which I do with programming, so that I have to physically enable the throttle cut before I can disable it, no matter where the throttle is. But I will make a separate video for that in the future. So that's the throttle cut setup. So we have a bit of safety on our model. The next thing that we need to do is get this installed in the model so that we can bind it. Okay, so here we have our model. This is unfortunately the model closest to what you probably get in your kits. Uh, it's quite big, so it doesn't fit on my desk so well, but bear with me and we'll get through this. So we have our receiver here. I've got the transmitter turned off. We don't need it on at the minute. And what we're gonna do is open up the hatch and take a look. So even though this is quite a slim area, we can sort of see what's going on here. So at the front of a model, you can just about see under this bit of foam here, our ESC. Now an ESC is an electronic speed controller. And what that does is control how fast the motor will spin, which is obviously at the front of our plane. We have the connector here for our main battery. And then coming out the other end, we have our servo plug. Now this wire is made up of three cables. So we have an orange, which may be white in some on yours. We have the red in the middle and we have a brown or could be black on yours. If you remember this, this Y cable, this is the different color scheme. So on this one, it's white, red and black. On this one, it's yellow, red and brown. It depends on the manufacturer. Basically the yellow or the white is the signal. The red in the middle is the power and the brown is the ground. Now the reason the red is in the middle is so that if you do put it in backwards, it's not gonna blow anything up. The, the power is always on the middle pin. So that's our electronic speed controller. At this point, we just need to make note of where things are so we can plug them in the right place. Now these two out the sides go into the wing. So because this model only has ailerons, we know that they're for the ailerons. When you start getting into, into more complex things which may have flaps, then you'll have to do a bit more investigation. But we have our left aileron and we have our right aileron. So at the back, we have two more servos. These are for our rudder. So that's actually the elevator. And this one here is for the rudder. If you just give the, the servos a little move, you can see which surface they control. So this one here is our elevator, which is this one. And this one here is our rudder. So, right, we have our receiver. These particular receivers 
the stabilized ones you always have the pins going to the back of the model so that makes it actually nice and easy because these are quite short where to plug the pins into you just need to remember that channel order again the aetr so the first one we have aileron i usually plug my left aileron into the first one if you look on the side of a receiver you can see a label showing where the pins go so the one at the bottom is a minus symbol in the middle is a plus symbol and at the top is a signal symbol so our signal wires are going to the top of the receiver on this so let's plug that in so we have our left aileron if you are using a y cable that will be the only aileron that you need to plug in the other end of this cable would then plug into what comes out of your wings so the next one along is the elevator which is this one right here then we have the throttle which comes from your electric speed controller that's actually what powers the receiver inside the speed controller is a beck or a battery eliminator circuit and that's what actually provides power to the receiver and finally for most of you is the rudder so that goes into the fourth slot now because i'm running two lots of ailerons i need to put the second or the right aileron into channel five and that's basically our receiver installed now that we've got everything installed we can get power from our esc so that we can bind our receiver with the model right so before we go any further you want to remove your propeller now if your model has got a spinner on it you'll probably just find a couple of screws in the spinner so you just unscrew those two and then inside the cover will be a bolt there you go the top of the spinner just pops off and then inside there will be a bolt this one is actually quite a big one Now, as I mentioned in my intro video to this series, this model is not really a beginner model, but it is the best one I had to actually demonstrate on. Right, so once you've taken the nut off, uh, the propeller will just come straight off. We can take the backing off for the, uh, the spinner as well. So while we have our propeller, I'll just show you this um, for how to actually attach them. On the propeller blades, you will see writing showing the size of the propeller. So this one has 13 by 6, and this number always has to face towards the front of the plane. If you're running a pusher, so the, the motor is at the back, something maybe like a Bixler, those numbers will still be facing forwards. So just make sure you put the prop on the right way or you'll find if it's on backwards you won't have hardly any thrust at all but anyway our props off the model is safe we can carry on with the binding so just because this is going to be really awkward for me i'm going to be using my battery which is a 3s this plane is actually a 4s but most of you guys will be running a probably a 2200 3s that is the most common battery for especially for beginner planes and all this is is a switch just to make it easier for me while we do this demo so i'll plug that in and you'll notice nothing's happened it is actually switched off still right so the next step is to bind the receiver to the model now i've shown you the power setup i've got my switch here i'm not going to go into great depths with the binding procedure because i have another video i'll put a link to in the top corner and in the video description but let's go over it briefly now it, let's go into the model menu rf system and we're going to go to internal module and we'll turn the internal module on now if you've got the flex firmware even if you're not using the r9 side if you're in the eu uh, you need to put the flex to 868 next we can go to access and choose which Ever protocol we want to use in this case I'm using d16 so that's what I'll select next we just need to check the channel range is 1 to channel 16 this is especially important if we're using stabilized receivers and next we can bind so I'm going to hold down the little button inside the receiver 
and then switch the receiver on. So you see we have a solid red light and a yellow light. So now I'll click the bind button and we can choose our bind option. I'll be using channel one to eight with telemetry on. The channel one to eight or nine to 16 part just refers to the channels output on the pins. So there we go. We can see we're flashing, so that's all good. So bind is okay. So if I turn the power off and back on again. So now we can hear that things are working. This might be a bit of a pain because I'm using a stabilized receiver, but basically what we can do now is check that everything's right. So I'm gonna go back out to the model menu just in case we have to change something. So the first thing I'm gonna check is the elevator. If I pull back, this should come up, which it is. It's quite jerky because I'm a bit close to it. You can see it's smooth if I move further away. So let's maybe stick that down there. But you can see if I pull back, this comes up. If I push forward, it goes down. Obviously, again, this is not a beginner plane, so your throws will not be anywhere near that. And we'll be looking at that in the next video anyway. But we know our elevator is correct. So next up, we're gonna check the ailerons. So if I move the stick to the right, we should see the right aileron coming up and left aileron going down. So let's move that. And they're actually both moving the same direction. So what we need to do is reverse one of them. So channel five is the right aileron. So I'm just gonna go into the outputs for channel five and choose inverted. So now if we move the stick, we can see that they're moving the correct direction. So all the way over to the right, this one is up, this one is down. All the way over to the left, this is up, this is down. So our ailerons are correct. The last thing is the rudder, which should move the same direction at the back um, as the stick does. So that is actually backwards. We'll come back out into the output screen, go to rudders and go to invert and set it to inverted. So now the rudder is moving the correct direction. Again, don't worry about these movements. I know they look huge. Yours won't be anywhere near that. So the last thing that we can check because our prop is off, we can check the motor. So we don't have anything now. If I enable it, you can hear the motor is working. Likewise, if I have it on and flick the throttle cut, it works. So the final thing that we really need to make sure we have set is the fail safe. So again, this is in RF system. And I like to use a custom setup. So basically that is I can set the positions for everything. So custom means that you can set where it is so i'm going to set a custom and i'm going to click this button here that which you can see is blue and that will set it to the current position so if i move over and click it the fail safe position will be in that position but for ailerons i of course just want them centered i'm going to do the same with elevator again that is then centered uh, throttle at the moment it's centered we actually want it all the way down so if we click that we get the green bar which is where the fail safe will be and finally rudder again I'm going to just center that and of course aileron 2 on this one because we have two ailerons so that is our fail safe to test your fail safe, what we can do, remember, again, remember the propeller is off. I'll arm the motors, raise the throttle, turn off the transmitter. And you can hear the motors stopped, so the fail safe has kicked in and everything is working. So that's the basics all set up. What I can do is, while we're here, is I mentioned the trims earlier, I can show those in action. Now the easiest one to show it on will be the rudder. So the trim is used to make sure that everything is straight when you're flying. So if, 
as I mentioned, you find that you need to add rudder, you can use the trim to make that permanent. So just to show you, you can see that the rudder is a bit off center. So if I add trim, it's moving it around to the center. So my hands are off the rudder, but it's actually putting it in that position. In the next video, we'll be setting up everything mechanically. And when we do that, we'll zero all the trims to make sure that we get the best head start possible. But this was just a demo of how the trims work. So let's get that back in the center because we want to set this up physically. The final thing that we want to do is make sure that our receiver is fixed nicely in the model and also our antennas are set up correctly. So with our antennas, we obviously have two of them with this receiver. This is called a diversity setup. And what that means is we can put them in different angles. So that if we are banking over, for example, we can still get a decent signal. So the best thing to do is have one vertical, so straight up and down, and then one horizontal. And I usually do it forward to back because if you're flying a circuit, which you probably will do with something similar to this or definitely with a trainer plane, the side of the model is looking at you more than the front or back. So the vertical one will handle the front and back. And then you have a horizontal one along the side just to make sure you get the maximum coverage. Now the RF signal will get blocked by things like carbon fiber and sort of batteries. So just take note of where your battery is and where spars are because they could be carbon um, just to give you a bit better setup with your antenna. But that is our basic model set up. In the next video, what we'll be going over is setting up the control surfaces with zero trim. So this will include how much they move and also getting them so that they're pretty much level everywhere. So that when we do our maiden flight, we shouldn't have to trim much at all other than for the conditions. We'll also cover multiple rates, which basically what rates is, is you can see my full stick deflection is quite a big angle on this. When I set up my rates, I will have it so that full stick deflection could be about there on one rate and there on another rate. So it gives you options so you can have less or more throws depending on how you want to fly. And we'll also talk about Expo. What Expo does is make the middle less sensitive. So you can see here, I'm just moving it a little bit and the rudder is moving quite a lot. Now I've added Expo. You can see I'm moving the rudder in the middle and it's not moving much at all. And you can see, even if I go a fair way out with this Expo amount, it is not moving much at all. Sorry, I'm too close to the antennas. But if I go full deflection, it still gives me all the movement. So that's Expo. We'll cover that, how to set that up in the next video. So I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up and click the bell icon and subscribe button so that you get notifications about when the next video in the series comes out. It will also help get this video out to more people so they can learn to set up their basic plane with EFOS 2. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. But yeah, I hope that this gets you at least the first steps there for getting your model set up. And again, in the next video we'll be covering throws, rates and expo. We'll also calibrate the ESC, which at that point you should be ready for your maiden flight. Of course, if you're a beginner, I would highly recommend going to a club, having an experienced pilot fly the plane first, and then obviously buddy box until you're happy and confident flying yourself. But I hope this video was useful. See you later, guys. Have fun. Fly your models like a careful learner. Bye-bye.